Well, welcome to CCC this very week. Well, on Wednesday, April 10th at 7 p.m., we will be hosting a documentary by Eric Pataxis called Letter to the American Church. It's a wake-up call for the church to address issues facing our nation. CCC has been in, has been, uh, I don't like messing up. I don't like that. That is not a good thing. It's a wake-up call for the church to address issues facing our nation. CCC has been called to have a regional impact in all seven mountains of influence. And this documentary will help us be more informed about what is going on in this hour. Invite your friends, family, and neighbors. A resource guide will be provided that night to help you get involved. Next to Seder, well, on April 21st, we will be having our first CCC Christian Family Seder Luncheon right after our morning service. Come and learn how the biblical feast of the Passover was always meant to point to its fulfillment in Jesus. Well, there will be food and crafts, food and games, and food and songs, along with all the traditional elements of a Seder. Everyone is welcome, including your kiddos. Cost is $5 per person or up to a maximum of $20 per family, so bring the whole family to enjoy. Sign up by April 14th online or on the app. Scholarships are available. Join us for prophetic training each month on the third Monday in the community center. This month we will be meeting on April 15th and the topic will be hearing God speak. Jesus desires us to be hungry. There's that food thing again. He is looking for those who will set their hearts to listen to God's voice above the clamor of other voices trying to get our attention. All are welcome. Well, in the midst of all this rainy, gloomy, can't believe it's April type of weather, we're going to Puerto Rico. It's warm there, just saying. We will minister in the churches, streets, and schools, as well as feeding the poor and a special service project, plus more. Come expecting to see God move in a powerful way. More information? Visit the missions area in the atrium. Sign up by May 5th. Well, have a terrific day. Good morning and welcome today. It's so good to have you here. Um, welcome to you if you're here in person or online. I just want to read a scripture as we get started here. You can go ahead and stand up. Ephesians 6, embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies and take the mighty razor sharp sword of the spirit, the spoken word of God. You can have my yes with no exception. I'm laying down my right to second guess it. You can have my yes. I'm giving you my fear of never knowing whatever's coming next. I know you got me. You can have my yes. Cause you're the lamp, you're the light, you're the cloud that guides me. You're the way, you're the truth, you're the life inside me. You've conquered my fears. So I leave it all behind. I run into the light. Giving you my dreams and my ambitions. Your presence is my price and my provision. I'll dance when you ask. Oh, you could come against me if you were for me. Cause even in the fire, I know you've got me. I'm giving you my yes. You're the life inside me. You conquered my fears, so I leave it all behind. I'm running to the light. You're the lamp. You're the light. You're the cloud that guides me. You're the way. You're the truth. You're the life inside me. You conquered my fears, so I leave it all behind. I'm running to the light. Wherever you are, 
Wherever you wanna go, I follow. Yeah. Wherever you are, wherever you wanna go, I follow you. Wherever you are, wherever you wanna go, I follow. Yeah. Oh, wherever you are, wherever you wanna go, I follow you. Wherever you are, wherever you wanna go, I follow you. Wherever you are, wherever you. You're the light inside me You conquered my fears So I'm leaving all behind I'm running to the light You're the lamp, you're the light You're the cloud that guides me You're the way, you're the truth You're the light inside me You conquered my fears So I'm leaving all behind I'm running to the light
tried so hard to see it Took me so long to believe it That you choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it You give what we don't deserve Take the broken things, raise them to glory. You are my champion, and giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won, I am who you say. The one who has conquered it all Now I can finally see it You're teaching me how to receive it So let all the striving cease Cause this is my
I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated by the power of your name I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated by the one who has conquered it all oh thank you God
You gave your life for mine. Nailed to the cross, you crucified all my sin and shame. It was washed by your mercy. You are the treasure I find. My reason for living, so let my life become an offering to the one who is worthy. All praise to the Lord Most High. All praise to the one who saved my life. All praise to Jesus Christ. My King of Heaven, my King forever. You stormed the gates of my heart. The veil in between was torn apart. Now you hold the keys to the grave. stones away all praise to the Lord most high all praise to the one who saved my life all praise to Jesus Christ my King of heaven my King forever all praise to the Lord most high all praise to the one
Still the one who saved my life All praise to Jesus Christ High King of Heaven Let's sing that one more time today All praise to the Lord Most High All praise to the one who saved my life All praise to Jesus Christ my King of heaven, my King forever. your heart connect with the heart that beats with such holy passion for his people. Don't disengage yet. Keep your heart connected to your king, to our king, our champion. from your heart to his heart and drawing from him, drawing your life, all that you need, all that's heavy on your heart right now, he knows, he sees it, he sees the lack, he sees the hurt, he sees the pain, he sees the, the fear. Can you just put that straw in his heart from your heart and just draw, draw from him draw from him there is no lack there is no lack there is no lack in him there is no lack everything we need is found in our champion and our king our father and our friend everything we need everything if you need rest he is rest if you need strength he is strength if you need financial provision, he is financial provision. He is provision in every way. There is no lack with our champion and our father. All he's looking for is our trust, our faith. We choose to trust you. We choose to trust you, Lord, Jesus. We are your kids and you're good.
it's hard to segue out of that. <laughs> Jesus, you're all we want. You're all we need. You're all we've ever wanted. All right. Well, as an extension of our worship, he said if we love him, we must love one another, right? Can you just greet somebody beside you and welcome them? And if you're new here to CCC, do we have a slide? If you're new here, we have a welcome desk out in the atrium where you can get um, some more information. You can get on our website if you want to find out what's going on here at CCC and how you can get involved. So we welcome you. We welcome all of you. There we go. All right, so um, if you can roll the, um, the film, the video, there's something exciting coming up this coming Saturday call, called Call to the Capitals. So around the, the nation, on all 50 states, um, people, women, Esthers, Mama Bears, and Mordecais are all gathering at our um, nation's capitals, and including DC. And this is all leading up to October 12, when um, there's a call for a million Esthers to come to the mall. We're going after our nation. For the future of our children and our grandchildren, right? So anyway, let's watch this. and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of them, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, who is great and awesome, and fight for your families, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your daughters. Fight for me. Fight for me. Fight for me. Fight for me. Fight for us. Yay. <laughs> He's ready to fight for our children and their future. Um, real quick, Hebrews 11 says, their faith imparted power to make them strong. Faith sparked courage within them and they became mighty warriors in battle. This is talking about women. This is Hebrews 11, talking about women of faith. And they became mighty warriors in battle, pulling armies from another realm in battle array. Faith-filled women saw their dead children raised in resurrection power. Who wants to see our children raised in resurrection power? They're going to be a revival generation, and we get to pray this in. So we're so blessed to be really so close to our capital, so there's no reason. Stop what you're doing. <laughs> Don't do whatever you had planned. Um, if you can, in any way, seriously, come to our state capitol this Saturday, the 13th from 1 to 3. And if you would please register, um, there will be a table out in the atrium. Um, Yvonne and I will be out there to help you register. We would just like a head count, just kind of get an idea of how many will be there. Um, and we also will have a van leaving um, this property. If you would like to carpool, if you have a van or a large cool car and would like to help carpool, um, we really want to get as many of our ladies on those state capitals as we can. All right, one last thing before I introduce my handsome other half. 
favorite preacher. <laughs> um, he asked if I would just give a little testimony, and I know I've taken your time, but um, just an extension of our worship in this house is giving. It's really part of our trust and our faith in our Father and our champion and the one who provides for us, that our faith is not in the provision, but our faith is in the provider. And um, just real quick, maybe someday I'll share more, but when I was a single mom and I was, I'm, I was self-employed, I did not have a fixed income. It was scary. It was Rob pay, Peter to pay Paul sometimes. And I would be really tempted to not give and to not tithe. And I had that conviction growing up to tithe. And so there would be weeks where I just didn't feel like I could do it. And then that week, my clients would cancel. And it, and it just would be really scary, like the lack of income coming in. But when I would say, yes, I'm going to give it, this is going to be the first bill or thing that I write. I'm going to trust you, Father, as my provider. I was amazed over and over and over again how the clients would come and he, the bills would be paid and he would take care of the kids and I. And I have to say, in those 12 years of being a single mom, one um, income, basically, um, my shoes didn't wear out. He was the fourth man in the fire. He sustained us in the wilderness. And I just want to encourage you as we talk today about breaking off the um, poverty spirit. I keep saying orphan spirit because they're connected. We're going to break off the poverty spirit because our father is so rich and so good and you cannot outgive him. So, yes, I'd like to... Call up my favorite preacher man, Tim. Beauty and the Beast. So, <laughs> good morning. Thanks, baby. Good job. I'm proud of my wife. She's a good lady. And what you see here is how she is at home too. So she's the real deal. Hey, join us this Wednesday. We're, we, we need to see God move in our nation like never before, as Sharon was just saying. So here's another opportunity for us to be a part of the shift. This Wednesday, we're sh going to show a documentary. It's just a one-hour documentary. We're going to read right here in this room, 7 o'clock p.m. It's called Letter to the American Church. Eric Metaxas is the host of this documentary. And um, it's, it's I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'll, I'll prep you. It's sobering, but God, there's hope in the Lord. So we're not going to just watch the documentary. We're going to pray together as a church body and believe for a shift in our nation and in our own backyard here. We're going to believe for that. And we're going to also put tools in your hands because believing, how many of you believe, and this is a show of hands, so how many of you believe that every time we pray, something happens? Great. Those who didn't raise their hand, we're going to pray for you right now. <laughs> But how many of you believe that's the only way things happen? It's a trick question. We gotta pray and we gotta do something. Prayer and action is gonna shift things. We can pray and that does shift and change things. But there's times when we have to step up to the plate and we have to do something. So we'll put tools in your hands this Wednesday too. We won't just send you out and say, just pray. We're gonna show you what you can do to take action. So join us on uh, this Wednesday, 7 p.m., right here in this room, we're going to do that. We will not be live streaming that. The only way to, is that correct? Yeah, we're not live streaming it. So if you want to be a part of that, you need to come in person for that. So, so if you got your Bibles, we're jumping back into the book of Acts. Um, you can turn to Acts chapter 5. So how about we just take a moment, let's just breathe in the Holy Spirit one more time. Uh, just if you're comfortable doing this, just put your hands out before him. We just receive you. We just receive you right here, right now. We love your ways, Holy Spirit. We love the ways that you show up. We love the ways that you move. We just receive you. Have your way in us. As we 
talk about your word as we meditate on your word today. Have your way in us and have your way through us when we leave this place. We declare that your word was not meant for this moment only. It was meant for this moment and the moments beyond when we leave this place today. And I pray, Sharon's been just praying this and saying this so much lately that it's gotten into my system too, that as they were on the road to Emmaus, that their hearts were burning for the Lord. And I pray that right now, that as we leave this place, our hearts would burn in our cars the whole way home. They burn throughout the week because we met with you today. So we receive your word. I love that. Um, the psalmist said, I don't know if it was David or not, I don't remember in, the, in this moment, but he said, one thing you've spoken, but two things I've heard. So we give, you the, uh, we give you the freedom to speak to us individually today, whatever it is you want to say to us, whatever it is you want to apply to us. And may we not only be hearers of your word, but may we be doers of your word. In Jesus' name. We just say your name, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come on, just say his name with me, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. More than anything, we want you. More than anybody, we want you, Jesus, 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 Jesus. We just receive you. We receive you. There's nobody like you. You're everything. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about poverty mindset, but a wealth and, and a wealthy mindset. Which one do you think the Father wants us to live under? <laughs> now I'm going to be talking about poverty. You can, there are applications to finances in this, but I'm not going after poverty and wealth and finances today. You can apply it to any area the Holy Spirit brings to your heart and to your mind as, uh, as we chew on his word today. Um, so think beyond the finances today. Do you know that you are so valuable to what God wants to do here on the planet? What we're gathering to do this Wednesday and we're gathering at the Capitol Steps to do on Saturday is valuable in God's eyes because we are the sons and daughters of Almighty God. So when we show up anywhere or when we speak the things that are on his heart, we pray according to the things that are on his heart. We're bringing the Lord and his kingdom into those places. We're powerful. When we get that, we're gonna be unstoppable. Now see, here's the interesting thing. The enemy knows, probably more than most of us in this room, the enemy knows how valuable we really are, more than some of us even realize. And he's gonna do everything he can to hold us back, to make us, to give us these um, mindsets and develop a belief system that we're powerless, we're poor, we're defeated, we're dismissible, we're barren, meaning we can't take in and release the things of God that he puts inside of us and see them infiltrate the earth and manifest here on the planet. He's gonna make us, try to get us to believe we're all these things. Why? To shut us up and keep us from fulfilling what God has for us here on this planet. The Bible says in John 10, 10, that the enemy came to steal, to kill, and destroy. Who do you think that's aimed at? Not the animals of the planet, not the planet itself. It's aimed at us, to steal from us, to kill us, to destroy our dreams, to steal from us our calling, our uh, our confidence that we can do the things that God's called us to do, what we've been reading in the book of Acts, he wants us to believe those things can happen in our day. So that's what it looks like to steal, kill, and destroy. But what did Jesus say he came to do? To give us life, not just 
life. But life that's over the top, super abundant, super powerful, full of riches of the kingdom of God from his storehouse in heaven for more than we could ever ask or imagine. That's what Jesus came to do. So which side do we fall in? Are we allowing ourselves to be stolen from, killed, and destroyed? Or are we allowing ourselves to walk in victory as sons and daughters of God, knowing that we're powerful and we bring the kingdom everywhere we show up? I shared this a little bit on Good Friday. I want to share it again. That Do you know in Jesus' day when they did public crucifixions, they did it public in front of everybody for a couple reasons. I'm going to share two of those reasons with you. One of the reasons was because they wanted to humiliate and shame the person who was being crucified, whether they were truly guilty or not. In Jesus' case, obviously, he was not guilty. Well, he was. He was guilty of the good things they were saying that he did, and I'll get to that in a moment. But it was all about shame and defeat, to do it in front of all your friends, all the people that you, you run past in the marketplace, the, the, uh, the, your kids went to school with the parent who was crucified, and like whatever it is, it's for shaming and degrading somebody and punishing them publicly, making them feel puny. But do you know the second reason that they did public crucifixions in Jesus' day? It was so that everybody who looked on the crowd that gathered, the people from the marketplace, your family, your friends. And it was a statement to them, don't you do what this person just did, who we just crucified, because that will happen to you. And so put yourself in Jesus' day, who were the onlookers? People who watched Jesus heal people, people who watched him do miracles. So they basically were saying, hey, everybody, If you do what he did, if you heal the sick, that is going to happen to you. If you go out and you raise the dead, this is your lot, and this is how your life is going to end. If you choose to go and eat with sinners and tell someone who is in adultery that their sins are forgiven, if you choose to have dinner with tax collectors, if you choose to challenge the religious leaders and speak truth into them from God's heart, this is what's going to happen to you. How many of you know from what we've been reading in the book of Acts, that did not caused the disciples to shrink back. It caused them actually to rise up and do even greater things than they could have asked or imagined. They were not going to be stopped because of a public display of what happens to you when you do those kinds of things. You and I, same Holy Spirit inside of us. You and I cannot be shut down. Our country, I mean, Yes, the whole world. But let's just even hone in on our own country. Our country cannot afford for us to shrink back at this time. It cannot, guys. We know the heart of God. We know what his word says. And who brings light into darkness? Darkness doesn't bring light into darkness. You and I bring light into darkness. It's time for us to show up and shine like we've never shown up and shined, shown, shined before. It's time for us to be the body of Christ like we never have before. If we're quiet and shut down and shut up, there's going to be nobody that's going to bring the kingdom of God. So the enemy in this time is going, do you want this to happen to you? Then shut up. Well, I say, stand up and shout it out. Do you know, someone, someone in my life, I'm not going to say what state, just to protect this person in my life, goes, lives in another state, and I've shared this with you before, but in their school district, they are allowed to have two files on every child in that school district. The one file is for everybody in the school to see. So if a child shows up and says, I want to be a cat, and this is reality, this actually happens, I want to be a cat, and I want you to call me whatever, cat named Felix. 
You write that in that child's file that only the school sees, and you call them Felix when they're there. Or if they want to cross-dress or do whatever and associate with whatever it is they want to associate with, you write that in that child's school file, and that's what they're called and treated in school. But there's another file that the parent only gets to see, and that is a child's real name and the real identity of that child. The parent never gets to see that school file of what happens behind the closed doors of the school. Guys, this is on our watch. This is in our day. And this person is doing everything in their power to shift and change things, but they've actually had their lives threatened by people who hold school board positions in this place and they, they've literally been told, watch your back, we're coming after you. And so this is happening in our day. We can't be those who shrink back and shut up. We can't afford it. I don't want our country going the way other countries have gone. Uh, I don't have time to go into all this. I better stick to my sermon. So we have to show up and shine like we never have before in our day, all right? None of that was planned, so let me get back to where I was. <laughs> what is a poverty mindset? A poverty mindset is a way of thinking that influences behavior consistent with the following beliefs. So see if any of these fit. You should hold on to what you have. Opportunities are limited. Risk is dangerous. Success is temporary and it won't happen again. Remain, remaining in the background is safest. How many of you believe those things are true? Pastor Dave said this last week and I thought it was worth repeating. Mindset is what moves you. When we have a mind, our mind is set on something Things are a certain way. I am a certain way. This is who I am. When we have a mindset, whether it's good or bad, it motivates us and motivates our actions and we live from that place. So we're gonna be talking about poverty mindset and wealthy mindset today. So Acts chapter five, if you've got that, let's read uh, verses 12 through 16. <clears throat> the apostles are performing many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. And all the believers were meeting regularly at the temple in the area known as Solomon's Colonnade. But no one else dared to join them, even though all the people had high regard for them. Yet more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord, crowds of both men and women. As a result of the apostles' work, sick people were brought out into the streets on beds and mats so that Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as he went by. Crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits, and they were all healed. How many were healed? Every sick person, demonized person who showed up was healed. So you're going, now what in the world does that have to do with a poverty mindset? Well, I'm glad you asked. How many of you, when, you, when we read that together, how many of you had an, even an inkling of a thought, you don't have to raise your hand on this, of, well, of course, they laid hands on the sick and they were healed, but that doesn't happen when I do it. How many of you thought, well, of course the power of God came through them and people who were demonized were delivered. That's never happened to me. That's nothing I could ever do. Or let's flip it around. How many of you thought in that moment, well, of course they were all healed. It was the disciples. Jesus was just crucified and raised from the dead. So this power was still in the atmosphere. Of course they were healed, but I'm not healed. Of course that's not happening to me. What's wrong with me? If you thought any of these thoughts when we heard, read the scripture, that's a poverty mindset. We don't always realize that we just usually assume, well, I'm just being a realist. Well, there, there is something about admitting. I mean, I've, I've talked to people before who are as sick as a dog and they're like, you know, snots running down their face. They're like, I'm not sick. Honestly, in Jesus' name, I am not, not sick at all. There's something about reality going, you know what? I have a cold, but Jesus heals colds too. So 
I'm, I'm, not, I'm not against admitting what a reality actually is, but poverty mindset says these things don't happen to me or through me but the same Holy Spirit lives in us. So I want to give you a couple characteristics of a poverty mindset. See if any of these fit. First one is you believe your circumstances will never improve and that you should just accept it. You believe that your sickness is never going to go away. This is just how I am. Or you believe that we will always be stuck in this uh, financial place. Our marriage will never look like that marriage over there. We will always be hitting this wall. I can't tell you guys how many times I've talked and prayed with people through the years who assumed that even some of the sin that they were battling was just their lot in life. That's a poverty mindset because that denies the power of everything that Jesus did for us on the cross, if you believe that. If you believe you can't be healed or you're doing something wrong in your life that's keeping God from loving you or moving in your life or changing your situation, that is a poverty mindset. And Jesus came to break that off of us to give us a wealthy mindset. So it actually, it actually limits God from moving in your life because you're trapping yourself into that place and you're actually putting more faith in poverty in your life than you are in faith itself. So verse 15, let's go back to that. As a result of the apostles' work, everything that they were doing right now, which was healing the sick, because of what they were doing and the miracles that people were seeing with their own eyes, sick people were brought out into the streets on beds and mats so that Peter's shadow might fall across them as he went by. Look at the level of the belief in that passage. They saw it happening and they said, I just saw it happen. So therefore, I believe it can change in my own life. I too can be healed. My situation can change. I too can go out and lay hands on the sick. What they saw shifted and changed their belief system in that moment. And they began to believe and they brought sick people and all those sick people were healed. They're, I love, this, this, is, this is a little bit of a side note here, but I love that they all believed And they all brought sick people and all those sick people got healed. There's something powerful about when we gather together and we collectively put our faith in the pot and our belief system and all the testimonies of everything we've either read or seen or heard or that's happened in our own lives. You don't just need a testimony from somebody from your own life. You can, you can steal somebody's testimony and let it stir up faith in you. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes, but there's something powerful that happens when we collectively bring our trust and faith in the Lord. I mean, mountains can, and hills can shift, but man, gigantic mountains can shift when we bring our faith together in a room like this and believe together. That's why it's so important for us to gather together on a regular basis because we can't do this on our own. I need your faith to stir my faith. I need your belief system to come and cancel any belief system that I'm carrying that doesn't line up with the word of God. I need you to call me on it and you can't call me on it if I'm hiding in a closet somewhere in my own house and never coming out for anybody to ever speak into my life. There's power in collective gathering together. Do you get that? Okay, good. Also underneath this is a victim mindset. A victim mindset says, nobody understands how hard my life is. Nobody understands the things I've faced Nobody understands how difficult this disease in my body is. Nobody understands. And there's reality and truth to that. I'm not saying that everybody does understand what you're going through. But there's something about when we allow the reality of our situations to shift our mindset, where now, instead of acting like a victorious person that Jesus came to make us, We're actually acting like someone who's not a son or a daughter of God, but a daughter of the enemy or a son of the enemy by thinking like a victim instead of a victor. 
we shift and we take on the identity of the enemy's kingdom when we act like a victim and we talk like a victim and we think like a victim and we live our lives like a victim and we want everybody in the world to see me as a victim because that's going to make me feel better about myself. That is kingdom of darkness mindset. And that should have no trace in us whatsoever. We need to think like we're victorious. Yeah, you might have a disease in your body, but I know that Jesus heals. And we're standing on these things all the time. Yeah, you know what? I've prayed for 300 people and not one person was healed. Well, a victim mindset says, well, woe is me. I'm a daughter and I'm a son of God and he never uses me. That's a victim poverty mentality. A victorious, wealthy mentality says, I, you know what? Yeah, I've prayed for 300 people and not one of them has been healed, but 301 is coming. I have another opportunity coming my way and I'm believing that I'm gonna see something shift and change when I lay hands on the 301 person. And if it doesn't happen with 301, 302 is the lucky one. That's a, that's a wealthy mindset. That's the mindset the Lord intended for us to adopt and live. Whose table are we sitting around? The enemy's family table or the Lord's family table? Because the Lord's table is full of abundance and resources for each one of us. Do you know when it talks about that he, he um, prepares a feast for me in the presence of my enemies? Do you know what that's a picture of? That's a picture of sitting around a king's table and when you sit at a king's table, that means all the resources of my kingdom are yours. You have them at your disposal. And every enemy who thinks that they can do battle in your life has to go through me first. That's what it means to sit around his table. So we can sit around his table and talk of all of our, our, our war stories of victory and all the ways that God is moving and all the testimonies of what we've seen or heard or even experienced in our own life. Or we can sit at the enemy's table and all sit and whine like whiny heinies and ask us to come over and wipe the sweat off my brow because you don't understand how hard my life is and nothing like that ever happens in my life. Sure, you got a raise in your life. I never get raises. This is just my lot in life to live like a poverty person. Whose food do you want to eat? Whose table do you want to sit at? I'm sitting over here. I don't know about you. And, and, and let's, let's have the love and the courage to go, hmm. When somebody says something that sounds poverty, let's have the love and the courage to go, sounds like you've been eating at the wrong table this week. <laughs> this is why we gather together. Because we have to tell each other that, you know what? You've been eating a little bit too much of the dessert from the wrong table this week. Come over to my table where the Lord is, is serving chocolate cake instead of brownies with nuts in them. I mean, <laughs> praline pies and pecan pies. And why would you want to eat at the enemy's table when you can have chocolate cake every day, people? Can I get a witness? <laughs> I have no idea why people put nuts in things. It just does not. Hey, Jesus is just telling me the things to say right now. I'm. <laughs> Sorry. But this is why we gather together. This is why we gather together so that we can speak into each other's life and love each other enough to call them back to the table, the Lord's table, because we all need that. I have people in my life, one of them is obviously Sharon, but I have other friends in my life too, people on staff, friends that uh, we love to get together with that love me enough to tell me the truth. And I need that. And, you, and whether you think you do or not, you need that too. So a second characteristic is you believe success and breakthroughs are for someone else. 
I actually was kind of already talking about that. Um, when someone's promoted or someone's blessed, you become jealous because it wasn't you. When I was growing up, um, I have an older brother, and I love my older brother. Um, he, uh, we went to the, the school that the church used to have, went to church here, we grew up here, and he, um, he was always popular. When my brother would walk into a room, everybody would notice he walked into the room, and everybody would want to be around him, just talk to him. Hey, hey, how you doing, how you doing? Hey, man, hey, John, how you doing? Everybody loved, loved him, and um, he was a great singer, he was, a, he was great in sports. He was um, a great public speaker. He just had favor. You know those kind of people that everything they do, they just have favor? Now, when I said that if you just whined, that's a poverty mindset. <laughs> no, I've done that too. I've been like, yeah, everything, every time they show up, they get everything they ever wanted. But my brother was just always like that. Now, people would come up to me all the time and go, your brother is so handsome. Every girl loves him. And here they're telling the person whose face is full of acne, your brother is so handsome and all the girls love him. Like, yep, <laughs> yep. Or, oh, when your brother opens up his mouth and he sings, everything is just so, oh, his voice, his singing voice, oh my goodness. And when he just gets up and he, he shares in chapel or he just says anything, anything that comes out of him is just full of life and it's good and it's just rich and everybody wanted to hire him in their jobs and all these kinds of things. Everybody wanted on the sports team. Uh, they, he was their first choice. You know, when you did, isn't that awful in school? Do they still do that? to stand there and go, all right, here's your two captains. You pick your people. Well, he was always the first chosen and I was always the last one chosen. So everything that people said to me about my brother, I knew it was truth. And I had no issues with that. I was like, he totally is. He totally is great. And he's totally gifted. So I never had an issue towards my brother for any of that, not even for a split second. And that's the honest truth. I never held anything against him. But what happened to me was what's wrong with me? Where am I off? Oh, I'm not gonna open my voice up and sing. I'm not gonna get up in front of a, 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 my classmates and give a speech or talk in public. I was as shy as anything, so why would I wanna do that? So I said, I, will, I, I probably won't ever get to do those things because I'm not like him. That's a poverty mindset. And there was actually jealousy and I never held any of that against my brother. It wasn't my brother's fault that I felt that way and somehow I knew that in that season of my life. But there was a jealousy that was inside of me that came from a poverty mindset. Let me tell you what Proverbs 14.30 says about that. A peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. It's really interesting how things of our soul will affect our physical bodies. Bless you. Jealousy is like cancer in the bones. Under this mindset, you tear someone else down so that you feel better about yourself. You see yourself consistently as not measuring up and you get to the point where you go, well, this is just who I am. This is just who I am. A poverty mindset imposes limits on how the Lord will use you or how far he will use you. That spiritual greatness is for some people, but not for everybody. Do you know everything you read in the book of Acts was intended for you and me? Every bit of it. Every bit of it. So I grew up here in this church. For the most part, I was seven when we moved here from Chicago. And uh, so I pretty much grew up here. And um, we would have these healing nights. And I remember as a kid, um, the it was in a different room um, the other sanctuary that we used to have, but the whole front would just be loaded with people wanting prayer. And, and I remember as a kid pushing as far up as I could get so I could watch the miracles happen. And I saw people get up out of wheelchairs. I saw people freed of depression on the spot. I saw so many different miracles happen. That was normal to me 
to see those things happen. I, I remember seeing, like, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was just the era we were living in or if this is just really common, but there were so many short legs, even just an inch. People would have, they so who has a lower back issue? Who has this? Who has this going on? And people would raise their hand, they'd go, come on down. And they would go, here, sit in this chair. And they'd measure their legs and, the, and they would have a leg that would be like shorter than another leg. And I don't know if it was just back then or if that's still an issue now, but I would see this with my own eyes. And I would watch as a leg grew out to meet the other leg. That was normal for me to see that. It wasn't like, oh my word. I mean, I still had this all, but I was like, well, of course that leg's gonna grow out. That's just what happens when you have a short leg. I remember this one time, this is a true story. I remember this one time that somebody's leg was shorter and it grew past the good leg. And the, and the person was like, oh, oh my, oh my, well, go back. And I watched it go back. And I was like, wow. Bill Johnson, I was just listening to a podcast um, this week that he was sharing this testimony of the same kind of a thing where um, somebody was being prayed for and their one leg grew past the good leg. And so the person came up to Bill and they said, Bill, um, I kind of have an issue right now. And Bill's like, well, well, what's the issue? He goes, well, the Lord healed me. He goes, well, tell me the issue. Well, my, my bad leg was short and it grew past the good leg. And so now I have a leg that's too long. And Bill says, I felt a little mischievous in that moment. And instead of telling the, the longer leg to go back, I called the good leg forward. And so he called the good leg forward and the guy was taller. So I said, do it again, Lord. <laughs> I used to watch those things happen or people that were demonized being set free. And I used to watch that and go, wonder what it takes to get to the place that you can put hands on a short leg and make it grow. I wonder where you have to be or how much you have to be loved by the Father to lay hands on someone who's lived in depression most of their life and watch him set them free. What does it take to be like that? It takes being a son and a daughter. And we get to do these things. See, a poverty mindset says, that's not for me. A wealthy mindset says, I get to do the same thing. Now, I remember that I started praying for people and sometimes I'd see people heal and sometimes I didn't. Um, so, and I can't say I'm 100 proof now either. So if, if you wanna gamble, come to me and I'll pray for you. Because... <laughs> I'm just being really honest with you. I hope it's okay to be vulnerable like that. But I do, I do see people get healed and there's times that I haven't, you know? And I appreciate, I just heard Bill Johnson a couple of weeks ago say the same thing. I was like, all right, that makes me feel better. I'm just casting off a poverty mindset and I'm moving forward. But I remember I was very much intimidated and I thought, okay, I started to see people heal, but I thought I'll never be able to lay hands on somebody demon possessed and see them set free because that's for the really spiritually high ranking people in the kingdom. And then I remember people started inviting me in to pray for people who were demonized and I remember this one moment very, very, very clearly. I was alone with a person who was wanting to be set free from demonic um, influence in their life. And um, so we were praying together and we were seeing things happen in this, just praying together in this one session and praying through some things. And um, at this, this guy was like 6'1", six, 6'2", six, something like that. And, um, and I'm not. And so at one moment we were, he stood up and tried to intimidate me and he was looking down on me and he's yelling these things at me. 
And I'm looking up and I'm going, oh dear Jesus, what do I do in this moment? Now, these were not my thoughts. I look back and whatever my thoughts were, this was the concept. I have a choice to make right here and right now. Have this think with a poverty mindset and have this guy throw me up against the wall because he was, he was escalating and it was totally demonic. He was escalating as we talked and tried to pray through one thing. The enemy clearly was not wanting to let go of this one thing we were praying through in that moment. And I thought in this moment, I can either act like a wimp, a whiny, hiney, poverty-minded person, or I can act like a son of God and tell this thing to just go. So I looked at him and I said, in Jesus' name, be quiet and get out of him. And boom, his countenance changes like that. And I, and, I, and I stood there going, but inside I was going, oh my gosh, it actually worked. Was somebody behind me telling that thing to go or did that actually happen? But in, but in, the, in, in the moment I was like, And then he vomited something green in the trash can and being like any other guy, even though it makes me sick, I had to look and it was, it was green. So he, I don't, I don't understand all that stuff, Mark, but something came out of him in the natural (laughs) that was in that trash can. And we took that thing out to the dumpster and I've avoided um, pesto ever since. So... (laughs) But I wore my green jacket for you today, so there's that. (laughs) I'm sorry, that was really bad. Why was I saying that? Oh, I always thought it was for these high-ranking people. But in that moment, when it actually happened and this man got a breakthrough that changed his physical countenance, I realized I get to do this too. And I was made to do this too. And so were you and you and you and you and you and everybody connecting online. You were created for these kinds of things too. Second Corinthians 8, 9 says, for you have experienced the extravagant grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that although he was infinitely rich, he impoverished himself for our sake so that by his poverty, we become rich beyond measure. Third characteristic, and this is a big one. You live feeling like there will never be enough. Never enough resources, never enough blessing, never enough power, never enough friendships. There will never be enough no matter what you do. And you become afraid of taking risks because you can't see it for yourself. I mean, let's just be honest with it. There are times we all have lean moments, whether that's financially or you're waiting for your physical healing, your breakthrough, and you're living in that place where you're waiting for the breakthrough. I'm not saying deny that. I'm saying in those moments, what is our posture going to be in our hearts and our minds in those moments? I remember when um, several years ago, I was having some vocal issues. I was leading worship pretty much, you know, two or three times a month. Um, here on a Sunday morning in two services. And I remember just starting to have some issues and I just didn't want to face the issues because I couldn't imagine not being able to sing. And then I remember leading worship here on a Sunday night for a special service we were having. They were like, hey, can you do 30 minutes? I was like, yeah, sure. And 15 minutes in, I had to stop. I was in so much vocal or throat pain from singing. And I just was like, I just, I can't. Do any, I can't sing another word. So I went to see somebody like, yeah, you got some nodules, some growths on your vocal cords. So I went through this, they said, we think we can fix this. It's gonna take a lot of, it's gonna take time. It's gonna take probably six months um, to fully recover. It's gonna take all this kind of stuff. I was like, okay, I am willing to do whatever I gotta do. Um, one of the things that they told me that I uh, needed to do was just change the way I was singing. So I, I hired a vocal coach and just began to work on on how I sang. And I didn't have high notes. It was, I, it, I had to work to get my high notes back. And so she was working with me. My coach was working with me a little bit. And she said something that was so profound to me that in the moment I had a Jesus moment standing by her piano and going other places in my mind of how this truth 
lines up with so many other things on the planet. But she looked at me and she goes, you want to know why you can't hit that high note? And I go, why? She goes, it's in you. You have the capacity in your vocal cords to hit that note without an issue. Do you want to know why you can't hit that note? I go, why? She goes, because you don't think you can. I was like, I'm offended by that. That's not true. If I could hit that note, I could just hit that note. You're lying to me. And I just began to think about it. And she goes, come on. And she, she just began to coach me in my brain before we went after the voice. She coached me, she coached me, she coached me. She talked to me, she built my confidence up. She reminded me of my ability. And then she said, now let's try that note. And she said, when you do it, I want you to believe you can do it. And I want you to picture that note. It's a, whatever it was, it was a G or an A above middle C. I want you to see that note in your head when you do it. And she went, da, 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 and I hit the note. She goes, you didn't think you had that in you when you came in here today. You assumed those notes were not in your repertoire anymore. But I showed you, if you just believe it, of what's already inside of you, you will do it. And I want to remind you all of what's in you. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Think of that. Lives in all of you and lives in me. So you've got it in you. You just got to believe it's in you and stop living like there's never enough. There's never enough. It's e the whole Eeyore mentality is, oh, whoa, woe is me. Nobody understands. I just don't have enough in me. Verse 15 says that when that Peter's shadow fell on them, people and they were healed. You know the word there for, sh for fall is the word overshadow. It's the exact same word that was used when Gabriel showed up to Mary and said, you're going to carry and birth the son of God, the Messiah. And she said, how can that be? I've never been with a man before. I'm a virgin. How can that be? And he didn't say, in your own strength, you just think it really hard and it's going to happen. He said, the Holy Spirit will come and fall on you, overshadow you. Same exact word that happened to people. They were overshadowed by the power of God that came out of his shadow, Peter's shadow. And the same thing was happening to Mary that the Holy Spirit overshadowed. And this is what the word overshadow means. Divine power and influence is going to rest on you. That's how you're gonna do it. So it just reminds us who our source is and that it's not in our own strength and we don't have to lean into our own strength. If you think that a human economy is going to dictate your financial prosperity, you're thinking with a poverty mindset and you're putting more strength into human systems than you are into the systems of heaven. If you think you've gone too far, you've done too much, too much sin in your life, and that's why you're not getting a breakthrough from the Lord and you never will because you don't understand what I've done, that's a poverty mindset. And you're actually putting more faith in your humanness than faith in the power of God and the blood of Jesus that was shed for you. That's a wealthy mindset to believe in the power of Jesus to heal you and change your situation. So real quick, and we're gonna take communion in a moment. Philippians 4.19. So how do we live with a wealthy mindset, a wealthy spirit? Philippians 4.19 in the Amplified says, my God will liberally supply, which means fill until full your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Listen to it in the Passion. I am convinced that my God will fully satisfy every need you have. For I have seen, listen to this part, this is key. He will satisfy every need you have. Why? I have seen the abundant riches of glory revealed to me through the anointed one, Jesus Christ. That's how. Notice Paul's faith for today when he wrote that was based on what he has seen of God. Notice that the people, everyone who got healed in the scripture and acts was because they saw it. 
and the testimony has life. And the word testimony means? And so he did it again. God did it again because they believed. Live in a place where you consistently chew on and binge on the faithfulness of God and how you've seen him move and flow in your life in the past. Even if you have to take a testimony from 20 years ago, if that's the last proof you've seen that you can come up with, chew on that and rehearse that in your mind over and over and over again. When I'm learning music or when I've been in theatrical plays and I've had to learn lines, I rehearse it again and again and again and again and again and again until I know it backward and forward and it goes from here into here. Rehearse the testimonies of God. And if you don't have any of your own, then find somebody who has a testimony and chew on that testimony and wave that before the Lord. It's so important for us to rehearse the faithfulness of God. If we wanna live in a wealthy place, a wealthy mindset, then rehearse wealth principles. Rehearse the kingdom of God over and over and over again in your head. I'm gonna invite the worship team to come. Let me tell you this, uh, this story. Um, I am waiting. So I have, I have flat feet. <clears throat> now, anybody that I've ever told that I've had, I've had flat feet and they go, oh, okay, yeah, so do I. Or, oh, my sister does or whatever. But when you see how flat my feet are, you go, oh, you really do have flat feet. It's, it's true. I mean, I literally have pancakes, like, when you're walking in the sand, you would think Donald Duck just walked in the sand. There's, there's no like hourglass part where the, where the art should be. It's, those are my feet. Um, I've been, yeah, it's just, it's just how it's been for me so far. Now I could sink into that place. I'm waiting for a healing. I'm asking the Lord for arches to come in my feet. Um, I could stay in a poverty mindset and assume this is my lot in life. I mean, on a day like a Sunday when I'm on my feet for four or five hours, depending on when we leave here, where most of the time um, I'm on my feet, I can go home and my feet are so achy and so sore and I don't even wanna be on them the rest of the day. Um, it's, it can actually get, become painful at times, not just achy, but painful. So I have not accepted and said, this is my lot in life. Is it a reality for me right now? It is, but I know that the Lord can heal. So I decided one day to live outside of a poverty mindset and think with a godly kingdom mindset. And I said, I'm taking pictures of my flat feet now because I want a before picture when I do get healed. That's a wealthy God breathed mindset to have is, so I, I was living by myself, I was single at the time, so I'm here like this with a camera taking it and I have it, it's, it's in, on my computer, it's on my desktop computer. I have it there waiting for the day when I have arches so that I can put up both feet for you and say, look what God did. So we have to do whatever we have to do to find ways to have this wealthy mindset that the Lord's given to us and say no to poverty mindsets. Let me, let me tell you something. We all, as leaders here in the church, and I'll speak for all of us, all of us pastors, leaders in the church, we have rough seasons in our life too. I know I have moments when I feel hopeless. Notice I said feel hopeless. Or I feel like, is anything ever gonna change? Is this ever gonna stop? I have moments when I feel defeated, discouraged, I wanna throw in the towel. I have moments when I feel like I have nothing to give. There's been times, I mean, to be really honest with you, there's been times I've shown up here on a Sunday morning when I'm leading worship or even there's been times when I've preached and I've shown up feeling like I have got absolutely nothing to give today or somebody comes to pray with me in my office and I feel like I'm having my own struggles. I've got nothing to give you is what I think in my brain. But see, a poverty mindset stops there and believes that you have nothing to give. A wealthy mindset says, 
I have the risen Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit living inside of me. And I can tap into wisdom. I can tap into discernment. I can tap into strength. I can tap into power. I can tap into compassion when I just want to pop somebody that's being difficult. I know you've never had that. Um, But I can do that because I'm rich. I'm loaded with the resources of all of heaven in any moment that I need it. I can tap into that because he's got a storehouse and my name is engraved on the wall. And I have access to that because I'm his son. And so whether that's a healing or that's a whatever, and I'm not saying everything I've ever done has been perfect. I've told you, I've laid hands on people and I've seen some people not healed. But that doesn't mean that that storehouse still isn't mine. That doesn't mean that I should stop thinking with a wealthy mindset. But think about all the riches in heaven are at my disposal. So we have to go beyond what we feel and tap into and lean into what we know. And that's the truth of the word of God. So let's stand together. I'm gonna ask you to do this. If you feel like there's any hint of poverty mindset in you and you wanna get rid of it, grab your communion elements and join me down front. Because we're gonna take communion together. Anybody who wants to shake it off, I wanna pray for you while we take communion. grab their elements. We're going to all take it together. So let's do this. Let's just first repent of our less than thinking, our poverty thinking and actions and motivations. So before we even take communion, Heavenly Father, we repent to you today everywhere we've had lack in our thinking or we've even allowed a poverty spirit to even take over and overshadow us instead of letting you overshadow us. So forgive us for that, we pray in Jesus' name. Forgive us for less than thinking. And right now in Jesus' name, I commend every unclean spirit that is oppressing people today with poverty mindsets, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Take your thoughts, take your work, take your motivations and go in Jesus' name. There's no place for you here anymore. Go. And if that's you and you feel like that's you, just tell it to go. Just go in Jesus' name. Just go. And today we receive faith and a deposit of faith to believe in your written word, your spoken word over us, that we are sons and daughters, and all that you have is our inheritance. And we receive that right now in Jesus' name. And we declare it's not by our good works, it's not by our talents, our gifting mix, our skills, it's not even about our experiences. It's because of the broken body and the shed blood of you, Jesus, that makes all of this possible. So as we take this bread today, we tell you we're grateful for all that you did for us on the cross. And when you were up there on the cross, I wonder if through your thoughts, you were thinking, don't give in people, don't give in. They want you to shy away from doing what I did here on the planet. I'm wondering if you were cheering us on in that moment, going, go out and do it and go out and do even more than I did. So as we take this bread today, we take all that your broken body accomplished for us. As we take it today, we're remembering it and taking it into our system today. So let's take the As we drink this juice that represents your blood, 
we declare your blood is enough for me. Come on, I just feel like there's something powerful. We all need to speak that. Everybody in this room and online, just begin to declare, your blood is enough. Your blood is enough. Your blood is enough to heal me. Your blood is enough to deliver me. Your blood is enough to set me free. Your blood is enough to be poured out upon me that I can walk in power and I can walk in boldness and I can walk in freedom and I can set captives free. Your blood is enough that I can lay my hands on the sick and see them healed. Your blood is enough that I can set the demonized free from their oppression today. Your blood is enough. Your blood is more than enough. More than enough. More than enough. More in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on with great boldness. Gulp it down today. It's rewriting my history. Oh, come on, let that sink in. You're rewriting it. It covers me with destiny. Come on, he's doing this right now. It's making all things right. The precious blood oh, of sing Christ. That again. It's rewriting my history. Jesus and does not come from heaven, I command you to be quiet in Jesus' name because the Lord has spoken a better word over our lives and we will believe the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Now listen to this. Let me prophesy this over you today. Now don't you just love it when the Lord is speaking to you something and all of a sudden you begin to hear it from all these different places, the same thing. Well, I just sat down yesterday and I opened up a book for the first time, never read it, and it's speaking exactly this. It's by Chris Valadin, Poverty's Riches and Wealth. And then I'm gonna release you with this today. Wealth is the ability, the resources, the strength and the wisdom to create positive outcomes in the midst of lack, poverty, and or emptiness. That's what you're gonna do this week. Wealth is light in darkness. This is who we are. Healing in sickness, prosperity in poverty, wholeness in brokenness, favor in obscurity, love for the unlovely, beauty for ashes, 
and victors among victims. This is what we're going to bring this week. We have the wealth of the kingdom of God. Wealth is a can-do attitude, a more than enough mindset, and a nothing is impossible belief system. That's what wealthy thinking is. Wealth is radical generosity, extraordinary compassion, sacrificial giving, and profound humility. Last one. Wealth is always thankful and never jealous. It does not brag. It celebrates others and it looks to the future. This is us. This is the kingdom he died to bring. So Jesus, we receive this prophetic word over us today. Let it get in us, smear it on us. Come and overshadow us with this today. Come and overshadow us with wealthy perspectives and mindsets, we pray in Jesus' name that we can change the world around us this week, we pray in your name. Amen. Hey, real quick, if the ministry team could come, um, a couple words of knowledge, left side of the stomach, pulsating moderate pain, pain in front of left knee, burning in the left knee, dull pain in bones, gets stronger at night, right ankle is um, sore, possibly to a fall, pain in the top of the right foot, part way up from the big toe, pain in the neck, on back of left side, food allergies affecting your skin on your face and more, part of your skin, another person, part of your skin is itchy, tightness in the neck and on the right back side, pain in the knuckle of the thumb on your right hand, pain in the outside of your right wrist, and headache. If any of these are for you, or you need any, you want someone to pray for you for anything, we'd love to pray for people. So ministry team, if you could run down to the front, that'd be great. And uh, we love you guys. Go make a difference this week. Go kill the poverty mindset in the world. Thank you for being part of Christ Community Church family today. If you need prayer for anything, please let us know in the chat. I think your assignment this week should be that uh, every morning when you get up, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you through the day and review every conversation you have or every thought that you have, whether you're living in a poverty mindset or a kingdom mindset, and then help, ha have him help you renew your mind so that you're living in a kingdom mindset all the time. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you next week.